Okay, guys, we want to see some six liter mods. We've got our basic long block. We're going to try camshafts. We're going to try carburetors. We're going to try fuel injection and boost. Hey, guys, welcome to the channel. I'm Richard Holdener. It's almost the weekend, so let's celebrate with more power. And in this case, more power comes in the form of a six liter LS and not the ones we normally get from the wrecking yard. This was actually a crate motor or more specifically a crate long block from the guys at Blueprint Engines. It didn't come with an oil pan. It didn't come with a front cover or damper. It didn't come with an induction system. But the cool thing is that, that gave us the opportunity to test a lot of different things on this. We ran different camshafts. We ran different induction systems. And as always, we ran some boosts. So let's find out just what happened. Okay, let's jump right in on modifications to our six liter. This one came from Blueprint as a crate motor. You could use any factory six liter that had record heads like the LY6 that I've used a lot. And there are other versions from the factory that also use a record head on a six liter because it has the four inch bore and it works out very well. This one came from Blueprint. So basically all the components were new. This, the compression was about 10 to 1. It had a factory set of Recport LY6 LS3 uh, cylinder heads on it. It did have, uh, we did a valve spring upgrade on it because we were going to, we put Brian Tui Racing uh, valve springs on this thing because we we're going to be doing a cam upgrade. So uh, we put a set of BTR springs on this thing so that we could put bigger camshafts in it. It did come with actually a performance cam, this particular one. This is a test I did long ago for the guys at Super Chevy. And the camshaft that this motor came with was a single pattern cam, oddly enough. And this was a 223, 223 duration. It was 564 lift and 112 degree load separation angle, which we thought was kind of, <laughs> and, and, and this according to the data that we got, we asked about this particular camshaft because we thought it was a little bit odd, but this is what was in the motor. But the cool thing is it allowed us to do a cam test immediately on this combination. But before doing the cam test, we need to take a look at how we set this up, how we set this motor up because it actually came as an incomplete long block. So we had the we had the heads, they were bolted on. We had the rockers and valve covers and stuff. It had no front cover. It did have a timing chain on it. It had no oil pan or widget tray or pickup. It didn't have an intake manifold either. So we added all of those things to it. And to start out with, we actually ran this thing carbureted first. So we ran it with a a, a Holley dual plane LS3, because it's a rec port application, um, a Holley dual plane LS3 carbureted intake manifold. We put a 950 on it, which is way more carburetor than it needed, but it still worked fairly well. We had Hooker inch and seven eighths long tube headers. We put a Corvette pan windage tray on it and then ran this thing carbureted with an MSD ignition controller. So the MSD basically was supplying the ignition portion of it and allowed us to dial in the timing curve to, so that we could optimize power. So after dialing in the jetting and playing with timing, this thing wanted 31, 32 degrees to make maximum power. Our blueprint, carbureted blueprint six liter with that single pattern cam produced 494 horsepower. Peak torque was down here at 4,400 RPM, 457 foot-pounds of torque. But now let's take a look and see what happens when we add a, when we change the camshaft on this thing. Here's what happened when we installed a performance cam, and this was a dual pattern cam. This one came from Comp Cams. It was a 614, 624 lift, low 600s, pretty common for these aftermarket cams. It was a 227, 243 degree duration and 113 degree lobe separation angle. And as we have come to expect on these things, the dual pattern cam did make quite a bit more power. This pushed uh, power up to 522 horsepower. Peak torque was actually down slightly, 457, 58 foot-pounds of torque, so to drop a couple numbers. And you can see the single pattern cam, and this is normally what we see when we run a, a direct single pattern, dual pattern cam comparison. The single pattern cam a lot of times offers more low speed power and then loses power on the top. And this is exactly what happened in our single plane, dual plane combination. Now let's take a look and see what happens because I got really interesting results when we did a comparison between this carbureted intake and the ever winning and ever present and ever awesome LS3 EFI intake. 
Okay, now that we have the proper camshaft <laughs> in our 6-liter blueprint crate motor, actually, it can be argued either way. I mean, the signal pattern on a carbureted application of guy wanted a mild, like, kind of daily driver deal, that might, actually might work pretty well, but we wanted a little bit more peak power because we had plans for this. We wanted the thing to rev higher because ultimately, and I'm going to show you this, we're going to add a centrifugal supercharger that likes to make boost and power with RPM. So having a camshaft that allows us to run more RPM can really uh, take advantage. But before we did that, we actually installed the LS3 EFI intake manifold because we were want to run this thing supercharged, but we wanted to run it supercharged with EFI. But it gave us the opportunity to compare the LS3 intake manifold to the carbureted intake manifold on this LS3 combination. So this is our combination with the carburetor, 443 horsepower, 460, uh, I take that back, <laughs> 522 horsepower, that's more like it, 462, 63 foot-pounds of torque, and this is with our dual plane Holly with the 950 HP carburetor. Here's what happens when we installed fuel injection on this thing. We used a Holly HP management system. We used the factory LS3 intake manifold. We used a manual 92 millimeter uh, fast uh, throttle body. And then we had obviously injectors suited so that we could turn this thing up and make more power once we added the supercharger. But the interesting thing is, I'm going to go ahead and label these and show you that in fact, I'm going to zoom into this area right here. So let's take a look. This is the torque. Look at this difference in torque. So you can see the actually the dual plane, and we've come to expect this, quite honestly. I've, I've run this test a lot on cathedral ports and rec port stuff, and the dual plane manifolds actually do very, very well down low, and this one did well. I mean, to the tune of additional 50 foot-pounds of torque down low, if 33 or 3400 is your idea of down low but we're gonna go ahead, so we'll get rid of our zoom here. And then in this middle part, we can see from 4,300 out to 5,900 RPM, the, the LS3 intake manifold, the EFI long runner manifold, made itself known and made quite a bit more power. And here's the interesting part, because in no other test have I ever had this happen, <laughs> but <laughs> the, the dual plane intake manifold came back and looked to make a little bit more power than the EFI intake manifold. Now, it didn't happen when I did that comparison on the big LS3 shootout. It's never done that on any of these rec port heads before or since, and it's never done that on the cathedral port stuff. So I'm not sure what was going on here, but this is what happened when we ran this test, because we ran a direct test. We took the carburetor intake manifold off, put the LS3 intake manifold on in preparation for the um, Pro Charger. And this is what we got. So now let's take a look and see what happens when we actually add some boost. Okay, guys, we're taking a look at what happens when we change the induction system and the camshaft on our Blueprint 6-liter. But quite honestly, it would work with just about any 6-liter. It will work with all the factory rec port stuff like the LY6. It would work with the LS3 too, which is a 6.2. It'll also work with the uh, cathedral port stuff, the LQ4 and LQ9. You won't make quite as much power as you will as you would with a factory rec port heads, but if you did any porting on the cathedral port heads, all of this stuff responds very well. And a six liter, obviously, always a good place to start, good combination of power and torque, but let's get it to make even more power now. So we left it with our 227 cam, our LS3 factory intake manifold. We've got big injectors in it, which is good because we stepped up to E85. And the reason that we stepped up to E85 is because we were running boost. Now we're running a Pro Charger D1SC, and it made over 800 horsepower just right off the bat easy as pie the pro charger made 824 horsepower 702 foot pounds of torque the power curve was still climbing at our self-imposed shutoff and by our self-imposed shutoff i mean the editor said don't try to make too much power with this thing this is fine anything over 700 is probably fine but we did over 800. um it went the the boost supplied by the pro charger Let's take a look at the pulley ratios here. So we had a 4.25 inch blower pulley and a 7.5 inch crank pulley. This produced a boost curve 
that started at 2.9 PSI and rose to a peak out at 6300 of 11.5 PSI. This, uh, this Pro Charger had also an air-to-air -air intercooler. We had E85. We only had 18 or 19 degrees of timing in this thing. So it was all like plenty safe and it worked out very well. It just goes to show you, in fact, I'm going to zoom myself all the way up here, get out of the way so you can get a better look at the curves. But it just goes to show you, if you start with a six liter, you could start with a four eight or a five three, but start Starting with a six liter, you start with more power, and then as you make modifications, you end up making even more power. Armature holder, please make sure, like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.